Hello and welcome to Two Car Pros. Today we are going to be looking at how to replace an automatic transmission in a front engine rear wheel drive automobile. This applies to both cars and trucks with that engine power configuration. Um, there's kind of a lot of tools involved. It's a very involved repair, probably the second hardest thing to do, but with a little bit of time, a lot of bit of effort, it's totally doable in a home garage or a driveway situation if you have the correct tools, which I say in the video, just pay attention and you will catch them all. Make sure you have some eye protection because there'll be stuff floating in your eyes pretty much constantly. And other than that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is undo the negative battery terminal cable with an eight millimeter wrench or socket. Once it's loose, we can put this down in a way to make sure it doesn't accidentally touch while we're working on the vehicle. Okay, next we're gonna be underneath the vehicle here. And since this is a general guide for cars and trucks, we need to assess the situation. And the first thing I can tell you is that this transmission cross member is gonna need to be able to come down. In order for that to happen, this exhaust here needs to be removed. So we're gonna to hit the exhaust flange bolts here with some WD-40 and let it sit. And there we go, those are nice and WD-40'd up. And if there's any other exhaust flange bolts, go ahead and hit them with WD-40. The next thing we need to do is worry about our O2 sensors here. Um, it looks like I'm gonna to need to remove three of these today. Now, you're gonna to need to grab a 7 8 wrench and loosen it. Now, you can do this without unplugging it first because you can twist the wires a little bit because there's not a ton of threads. So, let's just undo this. Once you break it loose, you can twist it just like this, and it comes out. The next thing we need to do is remove these two bolts here on the exhaust flange. On my application, they're 14 millimeter, so I'm going to go ahead and remove them. Okay, so these exhaust flange bolts are super tight. I'm going to need a breaker bar to break them loose. And there we go, let's fell off the back side. It's kind of like a, a, just like a nut with a little plate on it. Now we can remove the bolt. And now we can do the top one. There we go, that's what it looks like right there. Nut and bolt, and we're good. So here on the flange from the, the exhaust manifold down here to the catalytic converter portion of the exhaust, we can remove these bolts too. And this is technically a nut on a stud and I'm gonna break them loose with a breaker bar first before I try to come out with an impact gun. There we go, nice and broken loose. Now we can break the top one loose. The top one, here, break this loose. Before we apply pressure, make sure that the socket is flush on the nut there, so you don't round anything. <clears throat> there we go. That's nice and broken loose. Okay, here's a quick tech tip before we remove the bolts from the or the nuts from the exhaust flange on the manifold, we can put a bolt back in on this flange side, so that way it doesn't fall on our head when we remove the nuts up top. There we go, there's a nut. And when you're undoing this final nut here, make sure you support it. So it doesn't fall on you. There we go. Now we can remove our catalytic converter head pipe. Just like that, easy. Okay, so we're here on the passenger side exhaust flange. As you can see, I've already removed it. It was the exact same procedure as the driver's side, but this top one was a little harder to get to. You needed a 
it's a combination of uh, extensions and swivels, which you can find at uh, any tool warehouse or auto parts store. Um, it wasn't too difficult. I just took my time, went slow, and everything worked out. Okay. okay, so the next thing we need to do is focus on removing the drive shaft here. Now we're at the uh, slip yoke where the drive shaft goes into the back of the transmission. And when we remove the drive shaft while we're showing you this, um, transmission fluid may come out of the back of the transmission. So we're going to need to put a catch basin or a bucket or something to catch the fluid. Uh, before we go on, I wanted to show off uh, this cool device I got here. It's an oil catch with wheels that you hook compressed air to to evacuate it into an EPA safe container or disposal unit. And the really cool thing about this is it extends mm -hmm. you know, a telescope. So now, it'll be able to catch the transmission flow that comes out of the back of the slip yoke. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is grab some WD-40 or um, liquid wrench, whatever you want to use, and hit the back sides of these threads here, not the actual head of the bolt, because then the uh, socket you use to remove that or wrench is going to slip off easier. So you want to just hit the threads here and be really careful not to get the head of the bolt. Then do that for all the threads involved. Great, now we're just going to let them sit for a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is put the vehicle in park with the parking brake on while it's in the air. And then we're going to grab our permanent marker and mark this right here so we know where to put it back together when it's time. Okay, so while, uh, while the vehicle's in park here, we're going to do these two bolts. We're going to break them loose and then we're going to put the vehicle back into neutral, release the parking brake and turn the drive shaft and that will make the two bolts on the top on the bottom. So let's go ahead and break these two loose. <clears throat> You're definitely going to need a breaker bar for this and a 12 millimeter 12 point socket. <clears throat> there we go. Now we can do the top two. Okay, next we can uh, remove these two bolts here, 12, mil 12 millimeter 12 points and then we can move on to the other ones up top. There we go. And now we can put the vehicle back into neutral and uh, rotate the drive shaft. Now the top that were now the bolts that were on the top are on the bottom and we can break these loose. So when we remove these two, go ahead and keep your hand on the drive shaft here because it might fall off, but more likely than not, it's going to be stuck. Next we can try to wiggle it a little bit. Okay, it's pretty stuck on here. Okay, our drive shaft here is kind of mated with crud and grime to the pinion flange here, so we're going to need to grab a plastic hammer so it doesn't damage anything. Hey, you're okay, ready. so what you want to do is hit right here with the plastic hammer so you don't damage nothing. There we go. And it comes loose. All right, taking it out slowly now. So what you're seeing there now is the drive shaft uh, coming out of the slip yoke, the back of the transmission, as I'm pulling it very slowly. There we go. There we go, it's not too heavy, maybe aluminum here. Definitely one person can remove it. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, we need to worry about taking the starter off the transmission here. On uh, most GM products, the transmission's actually, or the starter is actually on the block itself. So if you have a GM product, you don't have to worry about that. This is on a Ford Crown Vic, so we need to remove the three uh, mounting bolts. And I'm gonna show you how to do this one, and there's another one up here and another one even further up there. And you don't need to undo the electrical because we can leave the starter in the car. So that's what they all look like. We need to remove all three, but we can leave the electrical on. Okay, so the top bolt for the starter 
is easily the hardest to get to and I'm using a ratchet here with the uh, this extension and what's you kind of unique about this extension is it's basically the exact length of a starter so <clears throat> that kind of worked out the key to getting that bolt out is that extension that's just as long as the starter oh, I pushed it over to the other side of the starter but yeah it came out that's it now I can worry about the middle one okay there's the final bolt there all three have been removed now we can remove the starter here So the next thing we're going to do is grab a zip tie here and feed it through this bolt hole. And this mount here, because that's nice and sturdy. And then we don't have to worry about the starter anymore. There we go. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is unplug these two plugs here. They're like uh, main wiring harness to the transmission. And I've got a small mechanics pick. You can also use a small standard screwdriver. And I push down on this safety and pull the connector out. As you can see, this one already fell out pretty easily, but it's the same procedure. You push down and pull out. Okay, so. The next thing we need to undo is this shift linkage nut, and on mine is an 18 millimeter. It might be different for yours. Just like that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to remove is this mount for the shift linkage, and they're two 10 mils. Let the shift linkage just kind of dangle. It's okay. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is remove these two 13 millimeter bolts. That's the flywheel inspection plate. We need to remove it. So it's, it's not even, they're not even on very tight. It looks like you just break them loose. And then you can get the rest out with your fingers. There we go. Okay, so on this fitting here, I've used a normal uh, open end wrench, three quarter, on the fitting that goes into the transmission because if you try to turn uh, this flare nut here with a flare nut wrench, uh, the whole thing spins. So this is kind of holding uh, that fitting in place while I remove the transmission cooler line. And only use a flare nut wrench in this application, because you don't want to round it. There we go. Okay, so now that the um, flare nut fitting has been backed out and slide, slid, we can pull the line out and make sure you have a drain pan ready. Okay, so not a lot of fluid came out. A little bit, but I can rag that. We can take our three-quarter wrench off, wipe that down. So it looks like it's just content on dribbling instead of gushing, which is fine. So the reason I did the bottom one first is because if you did the top one first, it would dribble on you trying to do the bottom. So I've fashioned some little bit of, uh, I think it's 3 8 3 8 fuel line or vacuum line, and uh, put a bolt in the end of it there. Try to get that to stop leaking on me. There we go. That might help stem the flow a little bit. At least enough to get the uh, top fitting off. Okay, so now we can uh, remove the top tranny cooler line. Again, we're gonna use our wrench here. It's fitting to hold it in place while we get our flare nut wrench. To at least break it loose. See, see how it's nice and loose? I don't have to try very hard on it. At that point, you can flip the wrench over to the open end and it's a little bit easier in tight quarters. I 
Okay. There you go. Top uh, transmission cooler line is out. Doesn't look like it's leaking at all, so we can move on. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is remove this port. That'll give us access to the torque converter there. Now, before I remove it, I want to tell you that there's basically three different ways you can gain access to your torque converter depending on your application. You can do it through your flywheel inspection port, but this vehicle, that's impossible because the oil pan is in the way. Or you do it through the starter hole. So you remove the starter and then you can get to the torque converter bolts that way. This one has a port though, and it's just like a little rubber, um, I don't know, plug that you just need to remove. Now we have access to the torque converter. Okay, what you're looking at now is um, part of the torque converter there, and as you can see, there's no nut or bolt to undo, and that's because the torque converter isn't span, hasn't spun enough to show up in that inspection port. And what we need to do is turn the engine over by hand uh, to get the nuts or bolts in the right position. So next, I'm going to show you how to turn over the engine manually. You're going to need a breaker bar and the correct socket for the front of the harmonic balancer here. The harmonic balancer is uh, directly on t in front of the, cr it's attached to the crankshaft. So we need to turn this clockwise if you're looking straight on at the engine. Mine's a three quarter socket, but yours may be different. So as we're turning the engine by hand, we can look up into the inspection port that I showed you earlier until you see a bolt or a nut. Just like that. And make sure you go clockwise. Do not go counterclockwise. Okay, so we're looking at the inspection port like we were before, and we're slowly turning the engine over. There's either three or four nuts or bolts that we need to remove, so we're just going to keep turning the engine over until we see one. And there's one right there. Perfect. So now we can remove it. Okay, so as you can see, I've already got my ratchet here with a small extension on a 14 millimeter socket. Uh, there's either three or four nuts or bolts, and you're just going to do what I'm doing here until all the nuts or bolts are off of the torque converter. And they are pretty snug, so you might have to have someone hold the crankshaft for you, like we were doing earlier, instead of moving it, just holding it. And there we go, there's the nuts. A nut right there for you. There's either three or four of these, and if you have a GM product, uh, these will be bolts, but this is a Ford product, so there's nuts. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is remove the torque converter inspection plug here. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is grab a large pry bar or enormous standard screwdriver, and we're going to put it between the flex plate and the torque converter. And then, when we're ready, we can pivot it backward, and it will move the torque converter back into the transmission. So now I'm going to move the torque converter back off of the flex plate here. It's very easy, it just comes right back. Make sure it's fully seated back into the transmission so it comes out with it. So the next thing we need to worry about is the bell housing bolts. Now what we can do is break the bottom ones, the bottom two, loose on e either side, on both sides actually, excuse me, um, but leave them in because we need to remove the other bell housing bolts so we can see. And the last two that we remove are the bottom two on the sides. So that way it holds onto it and doesn't fall on top of us. But we can break them loose for now. And this happens to be a 14 millimeter, but yours might be different. <clears throat> there we go. Nice and broken loose, and now I can remove uh, the other bell housing bolts. Here we go, there's a bell housing bolt. Now we can move on to the other ones. So I got all the bolts out that I can that hold the transmission to the engine, you know, without the uh, bottom two being backed out, just broken loose. So this one's gone, and the other one on the top is gone. Um, next, we can move on to removing the transmission and cross member so we can gain access to the top bell housing bolts. Okay, so what I'm removing next are these two nuts that hold the transmission to the transmission cross member. Uh, there's two of them, and for me, they are 15 millimeters. So now we can remove these two nuts. Okay, so the next thing we need to worry about is the uh, emergency brake cable mount here. It's a part of the transmission cross member, so we need to pinch this fitting in on both sides with a pair of pliers and um, push this uh, collet or fitting back into this housing and lift it up and out. Yeah, that's tough. 
Excuse me, good man. <clears throat> okay. So once that's receded back into the housing, we can lift this up. So the wire can pass through that mount and we can set it aside. So we need to grab a 13 millimeter uh, socket to remove these bolts here. But we're going to loosen them and leave them in place so this, tra this transmission cross member doesn't fall down. Perfect, we're going to leave them just like that. So the weight of the back of the transmission is resting on this cross member here. Um, just keep that in mind when you're uh, undoing these bolts and leaving them in place because you don't want the transmission to come down just yet. Okay, so the next thing we need to talk about is transmission jacks. Since I'm using a floor lift, I'm using what's called a high lift transmission jack. It has a pedal here. This will push up the transmission cradle. It has a release here. This will lower it back down. Now, I understand if you're trying to do this at home, you probably don't have a lift at home. That's okay. You can use one of these, and this is exact intention is for you to be able to remove a transmission while laying on the ground. They are a floor transmission jack, and I highly suggest you use it. Now let's move on. Okay, so we need to grab our transmission jack here, and put it up towards the transmission pan. We're going to try to center it as best as we can on this pan here. We're going to get it close so it's nearly touching. Maybe move it over just a smidge. Like that. And then we can suck in the sides here to cradle the pan. What we want to do here, and we show you to do one, is we want to secure the feet on the transmission jack as close to the transmission as we can. Any way you can grip the transmission really well is what you want to kind of do so it doesn't fall off. See that feet now holds this just a little bit better. Okay, so this is the chain that is on the transmission jack here. You always want to put this over the transmission when removing it. Now sometimes, like I think in this application here, you can't really get your hand up there and there's just no way you're going to get a chain over the top of it. So we're going to have to lower it down just a little bit and then we'll put the chain on it. Do not remove the transmission unless you have this chain over it. So now that the feet are all set on the transmission jack, we need to take the weight off of the transmission cross member by jacking this up just a little bit. Action. There we go. Okay, so I've removed the inside bolts of the transmission cross member that we loosened earlier but didn't remove, and I've left the outside bolts in. Now I'm going to do one side at a time for the outside bolts. Okay, with those bolts removed, we can now get the uh, transmission cross member here out. There we go, and we put this in our parts pile. Okay, before we go any further, I think it's good to note that uh, the transmission jack is holding basically the weight of the transmission, kind of, but it's keeping, more importantly, it's keeping the engine sort of level, but when we let it down, the engine's gonna tilt downward, so you need to look in the engine bay and make sure it's not gonna pinch anything or crush anything, and if it is, you need to remove whatever that thing is. So this could be different for many applications. We're okay here, so we're gonna continue. Okay, now we can lower the transmission a little bit. Okay, so now that we've lowered the transmission a little bit, we can get our hands up and around it and we can put our, our chain on there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our hook here with the wing nut on it. We're going to try to get it to the highest link we can to hook it. There we go. And then we can tighten this wing nut here. Make 
making sure there's no electrical stuff in the way, like this. There we go. There we go, and that hook is nice and secure. The chain is nice and taut, and it won't fall off when we remove it. Okay, so as you can see, we lowered the transmission a little bit, but the tilt, or the plane here, of the transmission jack uh, obviously stays level, but the transmission is tilting, so we need to use our tilt adjuster here to remain parallel with the transmission. So as it's lowering, make sure this is these two are parallel to each other. And now we can lower the transmission a little bit more so we can gain access to the upper um, bell housing bolts. So here is one of the two upper transmission bolts we couldn't see earlier due to the tilt of the transmission, but now that it's tilted downward, we have easy access to it. Now, due to the tightness of the angles here, I'm not going to be able to show you it totally clear with the camera, so I'm showing you in advance what the, one of the bolts look like. we got to remove both of these up top, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is what you need to uh, get to that top bolt. You're going to need a 13 mil extension. Yours might be a different size, but you do need a swivel. I need a 13 millimeter on this extension here. Nice long half inch extension. And then we can put it up there on the bolt. Okay, so now we got our swivel extension on the bolt there. You can uh, get it off. There we go. Okay. And that is one of the two top bolts. I'm only going to show you how to do one because the other side is exactly the same. Okay, with all the bolts removed except for the bottom bell housing bolts, we can now remove those bottom bell housing bolts now. It may come loose just from removing these two bolts, which would be nice. Now, it may not, and we might have to get a pry bar to kind of pop it off the engine. I'm really hoping it comes out easy. Well, let's see. go, there's one, and now we can do the other side and the transmission will be physically still touching the engine but no bolts will be holding it in place. Okay, so uh, when we took those bolts out, as predicted, it did not come apart. So now we have the fun of grabbing a pry bar and uh, kind of pushing it back a little bit. Pried it off a little bit, but it still needs a little more encouragement. So I'm going to grab the rear of the transmission and wiggle it about. <clears throat> That's the sound you wanted to hear right there. And now the transmission is independent of the engine. We can move it backward a little bit. So huge tip that you absolutely need to do. You need to make sure the studs on the torque converter clear the flex plate here before you're ready to let it down. Since they do, we're ready to let, we're ready to let the transmission down. Let it down slowly, don't do it all at once. Have it nice and monitored. The, the cooler lines are a little bit in the way, move them out of the way, it's okay. I'm gonna keep letting her down, making sure that the dipstick tube clears, which it's doing great. When you're at this stage of your transmission removal, you can look for little electrical connectors you may have forgotten or have been tucked away and they're kind of hard to see like this one was. So look all around the transmission and make sure you aren't forgetting nothing. We're ready to uh, lower it down even more. Now we're ready to come down all the way. There you go. It's finally time to move our junk transmission out from underneath our car. And we're ready to put the new one in. Okay, so here's our replacement unit here. We got it from LKQ. They're an awesome website that's a nationwide scrapyard that will deliver parts like this to your door. So this is a really cool unit. But the first thing we need to do is make sure it's compatible 
with the vehicle we just took our used one out of. So, we need to measure the distance between the studs on the torque converter, and we need that right now. So here it looks like 11 inches, so it's 11 inches between horizontally between each uh, stud on the torque converter, so we need to measure the flex plate to see if they're the same. So here we are at the flex plate at the back of the engine, and we can measure between the threads here, and it is also 11 inches. So now we can move on to make sure the rest of the transmission is what we need. Okay, so I'm here at the back of the transmission that we just got. There's a plug on the end where the spline is for the drive shaft. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And then we want to make sure our drive shaft will connect into it. Because if we don't do this step now, we'll put the transmission in, and you try to put the drive shaft on, the splines are different, you have to take the whole thing out again. So we don't want to do that. And clearly, it fits perfect. So we can move on. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is focus on this side of the transmission to make sure everything's identical to the one we took out. You want to pay attention to this main electrical connector here, how many pins and their configuration. You want to see where the coolant lines are, making sure those are the same, and the transmission dip tube hole. So the next thing we need to concentrate is this side of the transmission, making sure it's identical to the unit that we removed. Uh, focusing a lot on the neutral safety switch or the range uh, sensor here making sure it has the correct amount of pins and configuration, and the same thing with the speed sensor. So the next thing we need to do is we need to clear these transmission cooler lines out from metal debris. Uh, when you replace a transmission due to it failing, there's going to be metal debris through these lines and in the radiator. It's a good idea to replace your radiator, but if you can't due to budget or time concerns, this is pretty much the best, next best thing. So we're going to put this length of hose here to control uh, spillage. We're going to blow with some compressed air through the top one. Like that. And that's why you wear eye protection. So now we can start lifting our replacement automatic transmission into the car. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is replace the O-ring on the dipstick tube here. And grab a pick and remove the old one. <laughs> and grab our new one. And replaced, just like that. So now with our O-ring replaced, we can replace our dipstick tube here. Now, if you don't have an O-ring set, which are pretty easy to find there at any auto parts store, or even on Amazon, um, you can use some of this. It's automotive silicone. It says so up there. You can use that instead of an O-ring, but it's better to use an O-ring, in my opinion. So now, we can mount our dipstick tube. There we go. And that's that. Okay, so as we raise the transmission into the car here, we want to make sure that we don't pinch any wires. Because if this is hanging in the way, this O2 sensor wire, even just a little bit, and it gets pinched between the bell housing and the engine, um, you can cause a ton of problems because it'll pinch right through the um, insulator and cause a short. And then you're going to have to take everything apart again. So as we're raising our transmission, we just want to keep these out of the way. We're going to keep raising our transmission here, making sure that we don't catch the dipstick tube on anything and we don't get pinching wires between the bell housing and the engine there. We're just going to keep lifting it. And you're going to do like one or two pumps with the transmission jack to make sure you're not hooked up on anything. Now, see, ours was a little bit thin. So, mark it back and forth. We'll keep guiding our transmission dipstick tube and getting the wires out of the way. Very important. I know I've mentioned it a few times, but it's very important. The next thing we need to check is make sure that the studs from the torque converter are going to fit through 
these holes on the flywheel. We want to make sure they're on the same orientation between the flywheel and the torque converter. So just be mindful of this as it's going up because if these studs don't stick through this hole and they're just scraping against the flex plate, transmission is never going to go in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to pay attention to is the orientation between being parallel from this plane on the transmission and the torque converter and the uh, plumbness of this flex plate. So you need the flex plate and this plane on the transmission to be completely parallel. And it might look okay here at this base, but as it goes to the top, it's kind of like a V shape like this. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but as you're going up, you need to go ahead and tilt your transmission jack like this until it's parallel. Because your transmission and your engine need to be parallel to mate with each other. So now we can adjust it to make it parallel. There we go. And that looks pretty parallel, but we're going to need to adjust it as it goes up. Couple pumps, give it a check, make sure we're parallel, which we're not, so I'm glad I checked. Make sure the wires are out of the way. I know I've said it about 50 times, but it's important. So now what I'm doing is, again, lining up the studs to the flex plate from the torque converter. I can tell you it's about half an inch too far this way. So I've removed the service port hole here and I can reach up there with my fingers and kind of move the torque converter around. A little too far. A little bit too far. There we go. That's perfect. So now I can see that the stud is lining up perfectly with this hole, which means the other ones are lined up too. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm just going to place this bolt here and use it kind of as an alignment dowel as I'm pushing the transmission back to the mating surface. And I'm going to do that on both sides on the lower ones. So here we can make our final adjustments for the transmission going in, make sure there's no wires being pinched. My O2 sensor wire got in the way again, so go ahead and check that. And we make our final adjustments and we're ready to mate the two. Okay, now that the uh, gap is cinched up here, we can use our bottom two bolts that we were using, we're just gonna do them by hand. Uh, this is gonna help with our alignment process. I'm gonna wind those in a couple threads. We'll jiggle it about a bit. There we go, we can do the other side too. Okay, so what you're looking at is the torque converter stud going into the flex plate hole so we can move the transmission forward. What you want to look for on the sound, now that the um, torque converter studs are in the flex plate, is you want to look for this sound. This means that the torque converter is not jammed up against the flex plate, and you're good to move on. If you don't hear this sound, you need to go back and redo it. So now, we can tighten these bolts here on the bottom, the bottom two we put in used as guides. We can tighten those up. So here's the other bottom bolt in. It's the opposite of the bolt we just showed you. And we need to bring them up together. We need to tighten them basically at the same rate, a little bit on one side, a little bit on the other, because it could get all cockeyed if you don't. And that's the last thing we want. So the next thing we need to do is lower the transmission back down. And that sounds kind of counterintuitive, but stay with me for a minute because it's gonna force the engine and transmission to tilt downward so we can get access to the top bolts again. So as we're lowering, we gotta tilt our transmission jack to make sure that this surface here, the bottom of the transmission jack stays parallel with the transmission. So the next thing we need to do, now that the transmission is attached by those two bolts, we can undo the chain holding the transmission to the transmission jack. Like this. Get that out of the way, and now we can put the wiring harness over the top. We kind of forgot to do this earlier, but that's okay. You can do it at this point as well. It doesn't matter too much. So now we have it at this stage, we can plug in our range sensor and our speed sensor and push the other wires over the top of the transmission there. 
and then plug in the other electrical connectors as well. Plug in the sensor, now we got the um, harness kind of over the main hump of the transmission and we can do the other side now. Okay, so now we can plug in these two electrical connectors. I'm going to do the left one first. There we go, it makes a little ping noise when it's in place. And they only go in one way, so if it's not going in, it's probably in wrong. There we go, nice little click, and make sure they're fully in because you don't want to have to take the transmission back out to plug in a silly electrical connector. Now we can plug in the valve body electrical connector. It's that seven pin one we saw earlier. Make sure that's fully on. And don't worry about this one, this is an O2 sensor that goes to the exhaust that's not installed yet, so we can install that later. So the next thing we need to do is reattach the transmission cooler lines. Now, these are a little tricky to get in because the line itself kind of dictates how square uh, the threads are going on. So you might want to twist the threads while you're wiggling the line a little bit. Walk it on like that, and that's perfect. And then we can tighten it on. Okay, now that it's snug, we can grab the flare nut side. And tighten it till it's snug. And that's great. The first the top one's on. And we can do the lower one. Same procedure. Now the wiggling of the line there, that's what does it for you. Perfect. And again we can tighten it up there. Got it snug, we can go to the flare nut side again. To tighten it up. We're just looking for a snug here. To not be Hercules tight. But snug is good. Just like that. Perfect. Okay, so now we can get a very long extension and our 13 millimeter swivel socket. And uh... there you go, nice and tight. And if you're wondering why I'm using an air gun now instead of hand tools, because I said to use hand tools earlier, it's because uh, the transmissions, it basically already made it to the engine with the bottom ones when I used hand tools earlier. I threaded it in by hand on the top one and I'm using an air gun to finish off the threads. Now we can replace the transmission mount. Uh, we removed the old one off of our transmission that we removed earlier. Some of them come with it, but this one didn't. That's okay. Let's start the threads on by hand. Grab my gun here. And it's installed. So now we can lift the transmission for the final time because as we lift it, uh, it's going to give us the ability to put the cross member underneath it. And then you lower it down on the cross member. So as this is the final time, we'll be lifting the transmission up. And right there is perfect. Now we can replace the transmission cross member that we removed earlier. Now I'm putting the nuts on here for the transmission mounting bracket. Just so the cross member doesn't fall on me when I'm trying to uh, bolt it into the car here. So I've already done this side. I just did that left one in front of you. Okay, so we got the cross member back in there, which is super cool. I've already put one of the bolts in for the car. Now I can do the other one.
There we go, now we can do the other side. So now, I'm putting the bolts in on the driver's side. It's going to be exactly the same. And there we go. Now we can replace our emergency brake cable. Now we need to replace this guide for the emergency brake cable. Just back it up here. Put the cone here in the hole. We pull it out and we're all good. So now we can lower the transmission jack. We are finished with it. Very exciting. And if we've done everything right, it shouldn't fall down. It's a joke. Laugh because it's funny. Okay, so now I'm sure you've screamed at your computer screams a few times that I have not put the last two bell housing bolts in, but I'm gonna do them now. It's easier to do it this way because everything's nice and lined up for you. So I'm gonna show you this side and it's up to you to use your imagination for the other side, because I showed you how to take the other side ones out. It's exactly the same thing. <clears throat> Perfect, now we can do the other side. Okay, so once you think you've gotten everything in, go ahead and check your bolt bin and make sure you don't have any more. Because we wanna make sure we get all the bell housing bolts in. I know there's probably at least a few of you out there that are okay only putting four in, but that's not the way I like to do things. I wanna do things complete. We got that one there. We got a little deep well for me. There we go. Perfect. And then do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is replace the shift linkage bracket. It's this piece here. It's held on by two 10 mils. Let me go ahead and replace those. Well, now we can tighten these bolts up. So up top, on the shifter, you know, where you normally shift gears inside, is in park. So this cable is in park, but our uh, neutral safety shift, wow, but our neutral safety switch, or our range finder here, uh, is in who knows. So we need to push this fully back. That means it's in park. So now the two are synced together. One's in park and the other's in park. And now we can put this large nut on. Nice and snug, and now the shifter and the transmission are in sync. So if it's off and for some reason park up there doesn't mean park down here, this is where you adjust it. Okay, so to get the torque converter nuts on, like we did before, we need to turn the front of the engine until we can see one. A little more. There you go, not oh, too far. That's good. Perfect, so we can see that stud right there. Yes, you can. And we can put the nut on, nuts on. You can see up there. There we go. Nuts on there, but it needs to be tightened. So we'll grab our ratchet here. Now to get some real uh, torque on here, you're gonna have to hold the front of the engine like we did to remove them. So, this is where it pays to have a helper. There we go, nice and tight. Now, I'm only showing you how to do one nut. There's four on this particular application, but there might be three on yours, and they might be bolts instead of nuts. So, you're just gonna rotate the engine and look for more nuts and, or bolts and put them on. Again, you can have three or four. So, I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up, and I'll catch you guys when I'm done. Okay, so now we need to replace the plug that removed earlier that gave us access to the torque converter nuts. Make sure it's fully seated like this, and you're perfect. Okay, so now we can cut the starter loose that we zip tied up there earlier. I can turn the starter in the correct orientation here. Okay, so we're gonna put in the bolts we can see finger tight. And then we're gonna do the top bolt that we can't see that's kind of a pain in the neck. 
Okay, now we can do the top one. You absolutely have no chance of seeing. But trust me, I'm doing it. So now we can tighten the bottom two. Now we have the top one in and tighten the top one last. There you go. And make sure you've tightened all three. So next thing we want to do is clean the transmission slip yoke here, the outside there. And then we can apply a little bit of uh, transmission fluid to the slip yoke. Okay, so now it is time to put our drive shaft back in. And you put the slip yoke here into the transmission slide it all the way in just like that okay so now that we have found our marker and matching it here to the pinion flange we can put the bolts back in you can kind of jiggle the drive shaft around it helps you put the bolts in a little bit tightening them you want to hit them in a star pattern or an X pattern so we'll go across here and you want to torque these to about 55 foot-pounds to 60 foot-pounds that kind of neighborhood so we can do this one this one And then we can uh, go around them. Here we go. Okay, so now we can replace our torque converter cover plate. can put this uh, access plug back in. There we go. Okay, now we can replace our exhaust. So those are the nuts that I put walked on by hand there, but I haven't tightened them just yet. So now we can put in the bolts for the back half of the exhaust here. Now, you don't want to put these ones, you don't want to tighten the front ones on that we did earlier because if you do, you're never going to get enough give to put the rest of the exhaust together. Now we can tighten these bolts up here on this exhaust flange. So what I got here is a pretty long extension with a swivel, universal swivel on a deep well. And I'll tighten these up. And I'm gonna do the top. There we go. So the next thing we're going to do is replace the O2 sensors uh, that were removed earlier. Now I'm going to show you how to do one and then you need to do the rest because it may have more or less. So I'm going to show you how to do one real quick. There we go. And we can tighten it up here with our 7 8 wrench. That need to be super, super tight. Now once it's tight, we can plug it in. Now we can plug it in here. Like that, it only goes in one way. 
So now you can see that it's really easy for this wire to touch the catalytic converter here. That's not what you don't want. You want to store it up in a way in such a fashion that it won't come loose and dislodged and touch the exhaust. That's pretty good right there. Okay, so once you think you're all done and you think you're going to sail off into the sunset no problem, go ahead and look around one last time. Make sure no wires are touching, nothing's pinched. Every bolt is where it should be. Check your bolt box. Make sure nothing's leaking. You want to just double check literally everything you've touched in this repair because fixing it now, trust me, is much easier than fixing it later. And it looks like we're all good. Okay, so like after you do any kind of major work on a vehicle like we just done, we're going to want to reconnect the battery, but before we do that, we want to tap the um, negative battery cable to the terminal and make sure it doesn't spark like crazy. If it sparks like crazy, then we've done something wrong with the starter or there's a short somewhere and it just don't keep it connected. No sparks, so we're ready. We are good to put this back on. There we go. Okay, so now we need to pay attention to our transmission fluid. So we put a used transmission in our car here. Now, it probably has some fluid in it, so we can go ahead and check it. Now, if you have a rebuilt one, it won't have any fluid in it, so you're going to need to add four or five quarts to that kind of neighborhood and then start it, and it's gonna take much more. It could take upwards of 10 quarts, but since this one is used and taken out of a junkyard, we can go ahead and check it if there's any in it with the car off and there's literally nothing so I'm really glad I checked it. So now we can use our transmission funnel here, put it into the uh, dipstick tube and I'm going to put in, since there's none there, I'm going to put three in and then I'm going to start it and see where the level goes. Okay, so that's about three. Okay, so I put those three quarts in, I'm going to see where the level is now. And it looks like it's super high, but it's only high on the one side of the dipstick. If we turn the dipstick over, we can see that both sides match up here. So it's high on this side, but it only comes up to here on this side. So we know here is the actual true level. Now we can start the car and check the level again. <laughs> With the engine running. And we can see that it's dropped quite a bit lower. It's high on this side, but if we turn the dipstick over, it's down here next to this first dot. See on this side? Kind of tricks you, but on this side it shows you the real level. It's right about there. So it needs more. Okay, at this point, what we're going to do is a very important check. So look underneath it and make sure none of the transmission fluid is on the track. Okay, and then we'll get so we're going to go. Okay, so at this point, I'm in the vehicle, and I'm going to put it into gear with my foot on the brake. Make sure it doesn't roll anywhere. We're just going to go through the gear. Okay, it went to reverse. Neutral, drive. At the same time, this is kind of working the air bubble through the transmission. Second, first, looks good. And now I'm going to make my way back up through the gear range. And then back in the park. Now we can go check the level again. Now you can check the level again and see if it's gone down any. Which it very much has. It's merely just a smear on the edge of the dipstick now. So now we have a more accurate representation of where the level is. So I just added a, I think I'm on six quarts now, but yours might be different. Uh, and we have it pretty much perfect, exactly where you want it to be. 
We'll flip it over to double check, and yep, the level is exactly where you want it, just in that cross hatch area. So now it's time for a test drive. Okay, that was how to replace an automatic transmission in a front engine rear wheel drive vehicle. Um, it was a little challenging, I'm not going to lie to you. This is something you could do in a garage type situation at home if you just take some time. This was something that was a little bit time consuming, but not impossible for the home wrenching kind of sort of guy. And that's super cool. The one thing I will say is absolutely necessary is eye protection. There was stuff lying in my face constantly. so. These are definitely worth the $11 on Amazon. I put a link down below. I've also put links to things down in the description. I think you're going to need. Um, other than that, make sure you're subscribed. Thank you so much for watching. I do giveaways quite a lot on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed to catch those. And I'll see you next time.